The decision on who will be the next Crystal City Council member was decided by a coin flip. The coin flip took place in a work session. Tajian Sirisan was selected to represent Section 1, which was Nancy LaRoche's seat, who resigned because she was moving out of the city. After 90 minutes of discussion, the council was evenly split on the decision. The coin flip was between Tajian Sirisan and Terry Barish, and on Sirisan 1. The first order of business at the next meeting will be his appointment. New Hope is taking steps to name the next city manager. 33 applications came in for the position and the city council selected six finalists. Most are from outside of the metro. There's Reese Berthoff, deputy city manager at Beaufort, South Carolina. Daniel Buchholz, an administrator in Spring Lake Park. John Herrenstein, city administrator for Altoona, Iowa. Robert Hillard, City Manager of Oberlin, Ohio, Scott Maceros, Town Manager of Hope Mills, North Carolina, and Willie Morales, former City Manager for Appleton, Minnesota. In-person interviews are scheduled for May 2nd. This week, a law enforcement group gave out scholarships to officers who are continuing their education, including two women who work for Brooklyn Park Police. This comes as departments everywhere struggle to hire officers, and some say any way to keep and fill those jobs is key. Here's Rusty Ray. Dawn Syseth had quite a view Wednesday afternoon. That is exciting to see when I looked to my left and I saw all women. I'm not going to lie, it was beautiful to see. The Brooklyn Park School Resource Officer was among six Twin Cities police employees who received scholarships from the Law Enforcement Opportunities Board. She's working on a bachelor's degree in criminal justice at Concordia in St. Paul. Her Brooklyn Park co-worker Samina Ahmed also received a scholarship to help her finish her law enforcement degree from Hennepin Tech. She's currently a data analyst with Brooklyn Park PD but hopes to be a police officer very soon. It was always there. It was something I always wanted. Um, but seeing our officers and just the way that they work with the community, the way that they address mental health, it just, it felt like what I needed to do. The LEO board joined with officers from many departments to congratulate the recipients, who also heard words of encouragement from Hennepin County Sheriff Dewana Witt. There will be times where you're asked to conform to a system. You, there will be times you're asked to conform to fit in. But remember, when we're talking about true diversity, you are good enough just by being who you are. Brooklyn Park Police leaders want women to make up 30% of the force by 2030, but they're having a difficult time finding anyone interested. We have a hiring process open right now. We have six people apply, six. I mean, that's unheard of. But opportunities like those Syseth and Ahmed have could be enough to turn the tide. We pride ourselves on individuality. Um, everybody is their own person. We all bring unique traits to the table, and that's really what makes our department great. It's not that we're all acting the same. It's that we all bring different experiences and walks of life into the job, and it, it makes it incredible. You could say a small business owner in New Hope has found a naughty niche. Angie McGuire specializes in snarky greeting cards. Here's her story again with Rusty Ray. Sometimes a card can say what you're thinking, and you're thinking, that's what I would have written on the card, <laughs> but somebody else put it on the card, and it looks better that way. <laughs> Angie so McGuire works from her home in New Hope, nailing the perfect sentiment for just about any situation. I'm doing some packaging right now. On cardstock. When you're buying our product, I do think that you have somebody in mind. You see the card, you read it, and you think, oh, this is the perfect card for that one person. She started Muddy Mouth Cards in 2011. When I started this company, I thought, I don't want to make dirty cards because my mom will be disappointed. But if I make them watered down, then they're muddy. The content can be a little blue for some. We have a birthday card that's in our top three every single year. Another year of being pretty awesome. Still, she's tried to make it as green as possible. These are our plant-based sleeved, recycled envelopes. Each item gets individually packaged. Occasionally, she donates proceeds to charity. Right now, that includes money going to pay off school lunch debt at her daughter's school, which is part of Robbinsdale Schools. Out of the 11 schools, they start at $2,000 in debt, and they increase from there. So that's a lot of debt, a lot of families that could definitely use some help. Starting next school year, the state will pick up the tab for all students meals, but that's still several months away. I'm so grateful that 
the bill was passed and that those kids are not going to be struggling with that any longer starting in the fall. But we're not to the fall yet. So we still have kids that are accruing debt. We still have a long ways to go. We still can do more, I think, to help them. A motive that's nothing but nice helped along by cards that might be, well, just a tad naughty. Congratulations. Finally, you two can stop living in sin. In New Hope, Rusty Ray, CCX News. Students and teachers at Rush Creek Elementary hosted some very special visitors recently. Jason Malello has a story. Try to make our day-to-day -day learning different each day so that, you know, they have surprises and are get excited about learning. On this day, feel hot? <laughs> the Science Museum of Minnesota, we're going over the engineering design cycle, comes to Rush Creek Elementary School. It really cuts to the, the cost on to have to travel all the way to St. Paul and then the timing on that. So it's really convenient to have them come here. Students conducted experiments. I think the funnest part was to watch the trains go into the green water. And learned about the trial and error process of science. They never stop trying about, even if they make mistakes, they always just keep on creating things. Hands-on learning like this can be empowering for students. So the first test didn't go so good, so what do they have to do? And teachers again? say it helps to engage all kids, no matter their learning style. Not everybody can read from a text and then respond and, and you know, kind of the old fashioned way of teaching, but to rather get up and do it and to use their creative thinking skills. In Maple Grove, Jason Malillo, CCX News. Our 2023 All-Area Girls Basketball Team starts with Minnesota's best freshman. Greenway behind the back to Honaker for two. Number 30, Providence Academy guard Madden Greenway is a two-time state title winning player who averaged nearly 32 points plus seven assists and rebounds per game this season and has already scored over 2,000 career points. Our backcourt also includes Hopkins number 23 and Liv McGill. Gill for three. The junior averaged 13 points, four rebounds, three steals, and six assists a game. A two-time All-Lake Conference player, McGill recently committed to playing college basketball at the University of Florida. White says number 32, Abby Krzywinski, was described by her coach as athletic, strong, and gritty with the ability to stretch the floor. Now puts it on the deck and scores. The senior guard averaged just under 12 points and four rebounds per game. The all Lake Conference guard will play next year at North Dakota State University. Cooper's number two, Soma Kamara, was a talented combo guard this season for the 20 and six Hawks. The All-Tri Metro Conference junior averaged 15 and a half points per game while leading the Hawks in steals. And there's a steal by Kamara. Layup is good. Maple Grove's number 22, Kennedy Click, put up good numbers in their senior year. Now Click open from the corner and buries it. University of Minnesota signee averaged a career high 15.9 points to go along with 5.1 rebounds and 3.8 assists per game. Click's teammate number 31, Jordan Odie, is a rangy guard and wing who could score from almost anywhere on the floor. Odie set a Maple Grove single season scoring record for points this year as she averaged 18.4 points a game. The sophomore was all Northwest Suburban Conference and honorable mention all state. Turn, scores plus a foul. Benil St. Margaret's number one, Olivia Olson, helped guide the Red Knights to the state class 3A championship last month. Junior averaged a double-double this season, 22 points and 10 rebounds a game. Olson was named All-Conference, All-Metro, and All-State. He's verbally committed to the University of Michigan. Olson's backcourt mate, number 30, Kendall McGee, was another big scorer for Benilde. McGee averaged 20 points and six rebounds a game. She is considered one of the state's best prep guards for the class of 2025. Not on the front court, and Armstrong senior number 52, Savannah McGowan. Here's McGowan, though, for the rebound, scores and one. The six foot two inch post averaged nearly 17 points and 11 rebounds a game for the Falcons. McGowan became the first player in program history with 1,000 career points and rebounds. The All State Honorable Mention pick will play next year at Illinois State University. Providence Academy's number 41, Grace Counts, was a Miss Basketball finalist and a big part of the Lions Class 2A state championship team. Counts averaged 14.7 points and 9.4 rebounds per game. And like Armstrong's McGowan, topped 1,000 career points and rebounds. The All-State forward will play next year at Minnesota Duluth. 
White's out as number four, Shannon Fornshell. Led a very balanced Trojans offense this year at 12 points per game. Fornshell also topped the team in rebounds and three-point shooting percentage. Oops, and Fornshell <laughs> says no. Not happening. The six-foot, two-inch senior all-conference forward will play Division I basketball next year at Drake University. Hopkins number 30, Nunu Aguera, led the state class 4A runner-up Royals in both scoring and rebounding this year. Averaging 19 points and nine rebounds a game. Too strong on that shot. Follow up by Aguera. Second try not good. She'll get it again and score. Three time All Lake Conference player is also a first team All Metro and All State forward. She'll play next year at Stanford University. Aguera's teammate, number 20, Taylor Woodson, fought through injuries to still post good numbers in her senior year. What's an average 18 and a half points and nearly seven boards per game for the Royals. Second team All Metro and All State player. Woodson will play her college basketball at the University of Michigan. And that's our squad, the 2023 CCX All Area Girls Basketball Team. To view the honorable mention selections for our team, go to our website at ccxmedia.org. John Jacobson, CCX Sports.